boys and girls, welcome today to story time. And today we welcome Sherry and Henry, retired teachers from Eisenhower Elementary. Give them a round of applause. Hi, boys and girls. Hi, boys I'm and girls. Sherry Zier. And I'm Henry Zier. And uh, we're going to each read you a story, one that we enjoy, and uh, it's fun. It's just a lot of fun to read, and we have always enjoyed reading to children. We have. So. We have. So I'm going to start. Um, the story I'm going to read is Mother Goose, Oops, Mother Bruce, written by Ryan T. Higgins. And thank you, Scholastic, uh, the publisher, for uh, putting this book together. Mother Bruce. Bruce was a bear who lived all by himself. He was a grump. He did not like sunny days. He did not like the rain. He did not like cute little animals. And take a look at his face. He is really a grump. Bruce only liked one thing, eggs. He collected them from all over the forest. Good morning, Mrs. Sparrow. He has his head in the tree. But Bruce didn't eat eggs raw like other bears. Instead, he cooked them into fancy recipes that he found on the internet. <laughs> One day, Bruce came across a recipe for hard-boiled eggs drizzled with honey salmon sauce. So she went, so he went out to get the ingredients. Here he's pushing the shop and cut the bear in the woods. First he caught a few salmon, then he collected honey from a local beehive. He liked to support local business, you see. Last, he went to Mrs. Goose's nest to pay her a visit. He has his arm around his neck. Are these eggs free-range organic? He asked her. At home, so he must have gotten her eggs. At home, Bruce prepared the eggs for hard boiled. But the fire in his stove fizzled, so he went out to get more wood. And when Bruce came back, he was met with an unwelcome surprise. Still has that face. Mama! <laughs> Bruce became the victim of mistaken identity. They think, these goslings think Bruce is their mother. Bruce scooped up a little geese, the little geese and stomped back to their nest. And he's thinking in his head, I will have to ask Mrs. Goose about her return policy. <laughs> Only to find Mrs. Goose had flown south early. And on here it says, in a note, be back in April. Mrs. Goose is gone. Bruce left the goslings there anyway and went back home. Here they are in the nest. Keep looking. And here they are following him, but he was followed. Mama, 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 mama. Bruce was very stern and said things like, go away. And I am not your mother. And also, I liked you better when you were eggs. Not very nice, is it? Roar! Bruce could take it no longer and became extra grumpy with them. But if you look at those goslings, they're just kind of calm. Here they are again. They're just following Bruce, and it didn't work. Goslings always follow their mother, even if she is a he, and he is a bear. And he's running, and they're running. He climbed a tree. They climbed a tree. And here's one of them going, Mama? And here they are walking exactly like Bruce kind of army style, stiff-legged. Bruce was stuck with them. They're climbing on his tummy, but he doesn't look quite so grumpy in the eye. He tried to make the best of it. Got a pool out, filled it with water, the goslings are in it. He even got on his own equipment to swim. <laughs> it was hard work. Here they are painting pictures, everybody spattered in paint. Here he is going for a walk. Bruce has a shoulder strap for babies and he's got four places for each one of them. Four high chairs. Blah, eek, yuck. And he's so tired now, 
He's asleep on a log, and they're all snoozing with him. Goslings just doing what goslings do. As the seasons passed, Bruce watched the pesky goslings grow older. Annoying baby geese. Stubborn teenage geese. Here is on the headphones. You can't see that, but one's on the headphones. Boring adult geese. Now they're adults. Then, one fall afternoon, he saw other goose families flying south. The sky is filled with geese. Finally, he'd be rid of those geese, and he could take a long winter nap. That's what bears do. They hibernate. Bruce explained migration. He's flapping his wings, and they're all looking at him like, what? But they didn't listen. And here you can see they have on stocking hats and sweaters. Ready for winter. Yep, they did not migrate. Bruce needed the geese to leave, so he got creative. This is pretty funny right here. Put a slingshot between a couple of trees. He's got them ready with goggles on, and he's launching these animals <laughs> into the air. Here's another picture. He tried another solution. Nothing worked. This one is remote control airplanes. He's trying to send them out. The geese would not leave Bruce. He's got his mouth open. He's running the other way like, oh, and he had a big sigh when they caught up. <sighs> but it's not really an angry sigh. A bus. So Bruce decided to pack some bags and take his geese into town. They boarded a bus. And if you look at this picture, Bruce is sitting here. Look at his face. He's not so angry, but he has his backpack. And each of the goslings are, now they're each a goose. They're older, they're adults, and they each have their backpacks. And they migrate to Miami. Now they're on the beach. He's sitting in the sun. Mm -hmm. Now every winter, Bruce and his geese head south together. They laze about the beach in tacky shirts, sipping ice-cold lemonade while Bruce dreams of new recipes. Recipes that don't hatch. <laughs> and so here's Bruce. Sunning, and here's another one sunning himself, one on the water, two building a sand castle. They're just all enjoying themselves. And he does this every winter. And then the last picture, there's a little sea turtle, comes up on shore, stands next to one of the one of the goose, or one of the geese, and says, Mama! Uh -huh. Does this start all over again? <laughs> the end. Thank you very much. Why did you pick that book, Mr. Stewart? For this reason. Um, when Bruce began, here's the interesting thing. He saw the situation as one he didn't like, he didn't enjoy it, he was angry, he was upset. And the geese just kept coming. And he continued to change his attitude. And he adjusted to the, the differences he was living. And in the end, he was happy. He had someone who he can connect with. And he wasn't alone and all by himself which is what we need, mm -hmm. connection and not by ourselves. Thank you very much for listening. That is a great story. And I like it too, just because of the great pictures. I love looking at Bruce's face through uh -huh. this story. He's so, uh, just has such a good look on his uh -huh. face. Um, I couldn't actually even see the pictures. I was behind it, but because I read it with you before, I was visualizing all those pictures mm -hmm. while you were reading. Yeah. His facial expression was just so good all the time. And we like to laugh, so I picked another book that I really enjoy because it's very ridiculous. It's just a silly, silly story, um, and the uh, title of the story is Stuck. The author is Oliver Jeffers, and again, Scholastic has allowed us to share this with you. So this book, a little bit um, about it, is about this boy named Floyd, and the story starts with a problem that Floyd has. And the story is all about him trying to solve that problem, but he seems to make it more and more complicated as it goes, as time goes on. And it really should be a much simpler way to solve the problem than he comes up with. So, Stuck by Oliver Jeffers. It all began when Floyd's kite became stuck in a tree. He tried pulling and swinging but it wouldn't come unstuck. That's happened to me before. The trouble really began 
when he threw his favorite shoe to knock the kite loose. And that got stuck too. There's the shoe, there's the kite. So he threw up his other shoe to knock down his favorite one. And unbelievably, that got stuck as well. So in order to knock down his other shoe, Floyd fetched Mitch. Is a cat gonna help? Cats get stuck in trees all the time, but this was getting ridiculous. So we got Kite, two shoes, and Mitch the cat. Floyd fetched a ladder. There's a good idea. Mm -hmm. He was going to sort this out once and for all. And he threw it up. I'm sure you can guess what happened. I was not expecting him to throw it. <laughs> the ladder was borrowed from a neighbor who would definitely need that back. In order to get it back to him, Boy flung a bucket of paint at it. And wouldn't you know it, the bucket of paint got stuck. Then Floyd tried a duck to knock down the bucket of paint, a chair to knock down the duck, his friend's bicycle to knock down the chair, the kitchen sink to knock down his friend's bicycle, and then Floyd's front door to knock down the kitchen sink. The family car to knock down the front door. The milkman to knock down the family car. And orangutan to knock down the milkman who surely had somewhere else to be. So the tree is filling up with the door, the ladder, the bike, the chair, the kitchen sink, the bucket of paint, the two shoes, the duck, the cat, so many things. And of course the kite. A small boat went next to knock down an orangutan. Then a big boat to knock down the small boat. He's pretty strong, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. A rhinoceros to knock down the big boat. A long distance truck to knock down the rhinoceros. The house across the street to knock down the long distance truck. And there's the neighbor saying, Floyd? <laughs> Oh my goodness, Floyd, there has to be an easier answer to mm -hmm. this. That's a lot in the tree. Then the lighthouse to knock down the house no longer across the street. And a curious whale in the wrong place at the wrong time to knock down the lighthouse. He just innocently says, hi, what are you doing? Well, he's going to throw him up in the tree, isn't he? And they all got stuck. And there's Floyd, wondering how in the world he's going to get his kite out, right? It's all more than the tree. <laughs> Man. Well, a fire engine was passing and heard all the commotion. The firemen stopped to see if they could help. Can we help at all? They're always helpful, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Well, up they went. First the engine, followed by the firemen, one by one. There's Floyd tossing them up. <laughs> I don't think that's what the firemen meant. And there they stayed, stuck between the orangutan and one of the boats. Friend, firemen would definitely be noticed missing and Floyd knew he'd be in big trouble. But then he had an idea. He went to find a saw. There we go. There, that Is that should, the right saw? I would think so. Mm -hmm. well, the saw might help him. It's pretty little. Mm -hmm. He lined it up as best as he could and hurled it at the tree. <laughs> That's not what he should have done. And that was it. There was no more room left in the tree. The kite came unstuck. Floyd was delighted. He had forgotten all about his kite and put it to use immediately, enjoying the rest of his day very much. 
problem solved. But that night, that night, Floyd fell asleep exhausted. Though before he did, he could have sworn there was something he was forgetting. Right outside his window, we know what he was forgetting. The fireman is saying, hang on a minute, lads. I've got a great idea. And there they are, everything in the tree. The end. Well, we hope that you liked our stories today. We hope they made you giggle a little bit. And we want you to have a great summer, boys and girls. Have a great summer, boys and girls. Thank you Bye. so much for reading today.